Time crystals. Yes, they are a real thing. The first macroscopic one was captured on film for the first time earlier this year. The name alone conjures up sci-fi notions. In the cartoon Rick and Morty, the substance is capable of interacting with the flow of time. A convenient substance for time-traveling plots. But no, time crystals won't alter the flow of time. At least, not directly. The Action Lab captures the current scientific status quite succinctly. So, so far, time crystals, we know they're real, we know they exist, we've actually created them, but what it all means, we're not sure yet. Media articles all end with a vague statement about quantum applications. The conclusions of the scientific papers describing this substance predict academic breakthroughs in nonlinear wave physics. The very experiments have spawned a new branch of non-equilibrium physics, discrete time crystals. But what does it all mean? While I'm not sure, I can read between the lines. Stay tuned while I give you the details about time crystals and speculate on their practical applications. Applications that might be too out there for scientists to say themselves. If you've ever given someone a ring with a crystalline structure in it, you can tell them one extra neat thing about it. It's not just an ordinary crystal, it's a space crystal. Well, that may technically be a lie. Space crystals are just ordinary crystals. But that is the technical name for things like ice and diamonds. Like many words, space has a different meaning in different contexts, and the technical context is usually the least interesting. Space crystals are just collections of atoms in physical proximity adjacent space that have repeating pattern, something like these cool hexagonal lattices. Time crystals, then, have repeating patterns over time. The repeating temporal pattern could literally be a crystal that moves, repeating the same motion over and over. But so far the repetition is at a much smaller scale. Things like the internal quantum spin of the atoms cycling at a regular pattern, never settling down. Or, in the case of the first recorded time crystal, there's a magnetic wave that propagates forever. We can even see the repeating magnetic wave in the substance. These temporal loops might not seem that out there. Although we perceive time much differently than the spatial dimensions, we do live in a four-dimensional space-time reality. If crystals can form across the three spatial dimensions, What's to stop them from forming across the time dimension? That's the thought experiment physicist and Nobel laureate Frank Wilczek did in 2012. His answer was, there was nothing stopping this. He wrote a paper outlining his hypothesis, and it was off to the races. And it wasn't just academics sprinting to figure out this new phase of matter. Microsoft's Station Q, the self-proclaimed headquarters of world-changing quantum computer research, was very interested in the concept, and they made the first practical breakthrough in 2016. Their work, led by Chetan Nayak, gives a blueprint of sorts for actually creating a time crystal. In the next couple of years, multiple teams succeeded in building their own based on these plans. These early time crystals were only about a dozen atoms large and held together under very special conditions. But this year, Researchers created a much bigger time crystal, and at room temperatures. It's becoming clear that these things are a common and overlooked part of our world. So, what's the big deal? Well, it implies you could have one of these, or this in your room, and it would sit there, forever putting on a dazzling display as the internal configuration of the crystals shift periodically, with absolutely no energy input. This seems awfully similar to a perpetual motion machine, something science is pretty sure can't exist here on Earth. It also breaks physical notions of time symmetry and threatens the notion of conservation of energy. As of now, though, physicists aren't too freaked out about that. 
Although you can get these time crystals going, they haven't figured out a way to harvest any energy from them. When they go to interact with them, the time crystals melt, back to normal space crystals. But the way in which scientists form time crystals is very interesting. And it does seem to imply energy created out of nothing. If you scale these experiments up, it's analogous to slowly tapping on a hunk of jello. You'd expect to see ripples happening at the same frequency as your taps. But in the case of these time crystals, you tap, 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 and then the crystal starts to hum. It jiggles faster and more intensely than your tapping should have caused. And if you take a step back and don't jostle it further, it will never stop. Okay, so what's the big deal? Well, the real answer is who knows? Maybe this is just a scientific curiosity with no practical applications. But maybe this is a start of the quantum revolution, harnessing the amazing and spooky effects of the quantum world for use in our day-to-day -day existence. Things like quantum computing, free energy, and yes, even time travel. Quantum computing is the most often cited application of these temporal crystals, which makes sense given that Station Q is heavily involved. I believe just as our traditional computers use silicone space crystals, quantum computers will eventually leverage the quantum effects of time crystals, providing an alternative to using entangled atoms. But quantum computers are often misunderstood and given mystical properties. I think they are very cool, but their practical applications will be limited. I'll go deeper into my thoughts on that topic in a future video, but for now, suffice to say, I think quantum computers will be the first, but least important application of time crystals. I'm more interested in the seemingly free energy creation. Now, take this with a grain of salt, as most scientists are careful to clarify that although they find the energy behavior of time crystals quite odd, they do believe that atoms making up time crystals exist in their lowest energy state. Thus, it should not be possible to extract any energy. And so far, we have not been able to do so. But I'm anxious to see if this holds true as the size of the crystal increases. Right now, the largest one is one micron, just a barely visible speck. But huge in terms of systems showing quantum behavior, especially at room temperature. To get that tiny crystal going, you have to tap, tap, tap it with radiation. Then it starts to hum. So picture this. We know that space crystals grow outwards once they have started crystallization. What if we were to scale that tiny time crystal up to the size of a grapefruit, or a watermelon, or an entire ship. I would guess that if you just tap, tap, tap a micron-sized portion of that object, that little region would start humming, and it would spread out to the entire object. It may take the same amount of energy to get that micron-sized crystal going as it would take to jumpstart an arbitrarily large time crystal. And perhaps, once a bigger crystal gets going, there may be forces at play which we could harness for energy use. This may be the way we tap into the vacuum energy which exists all around us, allowing us to get more energy out of the system than we put in. A free energy machine. That would be the holy grail of technology, enabling countless technologies that are now considered science fiction. Things like the Alcubierre Drive's enormous energy requirements would no longer be so daunting. And once we've mastered that technology, utilizing faster than light travel to literally travel through time may not be that far behind. It wouldn't be quite like Rick and Morty, but it would certainly be strange. You can check out what I think time travel will be like here. And while extracting free energy from time crystals may be a long shot, you can be sure this is a shot that scientists are currently taking. I'll be following developments here very closely, and I'll be keeping an eye out for my next Time Crystal powered laptop purchase. I advise you to do the same. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell if you haven't already. 
Every two weeks, I dig into something un or underknown and report my findings back here. If you're ever looking for a more immediate take on breaking unexplained and cutting edge technology news, there's a couple other channels that should also be in your subscribe and notify list. The Unidentified Celebrity Review on Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday, and the Singularity Lab on Tuesday, Thursdays, 4 p.m. Pacific time for all of them. I know a lot of you have found them already, and a big welcome to everyone who's found my channel through those incredibly fun live streams. I can usually be found there, shouting my opinions in the live chat if not on screen, and you'll find other great content made by the contributors that have been on there. They also have a Discord server going, essentially a chat server for like-minded individuals to chat. Link is in the description. Stop by there and on a show and say hi. And of course, thanks for watching, rather be squidding.